data from 40 prospective cohort studies, over 3.8 million participants, and there were more than 450,000 deaths recorded in that cohort. What they showed was that there was a U-shaped pattern. People drinking two to four cups per day had the lowest risk of dying from all causes and cardiovascular disease compared with non-coffee drinkers. What if coffee could add years to your life and life to your years? Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I'm Dr. Sean Hashmi, board-certified nephrologist and obesity medicine specialist. Now, for decades, people have argued whether coffee is a friend or a foe. But the newest data, they tell a remarkable story. The world's most popular beverage may actually be linked with living longer if consumed the right way. Now, if you're new to the channel here, please hit that subscribe button. I share evidence-based health tips every single week. And today, I'm going to break down the science behind coffee and longevity. And I'm going to explain to you the mechanisms at work and give you practical protocol for adding healthy years to your life. Remember, when we talk about longevity, it isn't about adding years to your life. It's about adding life to your years. So when researchers examine huge population cohorts, hundreds of thousands of people followed for decades, coffee keeps showing up as a quiet, consistent marker of lower mortality. One major meta-analysis, what it found was that the data from 40 prospective cohort studies, over 3.8 million participants and there were more than 450,000 deaths recorded in that cohort. What they showed was that there was a U-shaped pattern. People drinking two to four cups per day had the lowest risk of dying from all causes and cardiovascular disease compared with non-coffee drinkers. But at very high intakes, the benefits tended to plateau. There was no additional protection from piling on more coffee beyond four cups. Across these analyses, moderate coffee intake translated to about 10 to 20% lower risk of death overall. Then when we look at large U.S. cohorts, so in three big U.S. cohorts, people who drank about three to four cups per day had about a 15 to 20% lower all-cause mortality and lower cardiovascular mortality than non-drinkers. This was even after adjusting for smoking, for diet, for exercise. And when we look at European and Asian cohorts, we also see similar patterns. Again, with the sweet spot, typically two to four cups per day. Of course, these are associations. They are not proof of causation. But the consistency across varied populations is striking. Well, let me know in the comments below. Type 1, if you drink more than two cups per day. And type 2, if you drink less than two cups. Once again, I'm really curious to see where all of you stand. Here's what most people don't know about coffee and longevity. There's a 2025 study using more than 40 thousand adults. And what they found was something remarkable. People who drank their coffee mainly in the morning had about 15 to 20 percent lower risk of death from any cause and roughly 30 percent lower risk of cardiovascular death compared with non-coffee drinkers. People who sipped their coffee throughout the day, though, they did not see the same benefit. What does this tell us? It's not just how much coffee, it's also when it gets consumed. What's the takeaway? Moderate intake, based on the studies, roughly two to cups, two to four cups daily. My personal opinion, two to three cups daily. But keep in mind, this is the sweet spot that equals the lowest risk of death in most studies. And morning cough appears to be more protective than coffee consumed all day long. Why does coffee support longevity? Well, what coffee is actually doing inside your body is quite remarkable when it comes to longevity. There are five key mechanisms. First mechanism is the antioxidant defense. For many people, 
coffee is the largest source of antioxidants in their entire diet. The polyphenols like chlorogenic acid, they help to neutralize free radicals and they reduce oxidative stress, one of the fundamental drivers of cellular aging and chronic disease. Number two is the anti-inflammatory effects. Coffee contains compounds that are linked to lower levels of inflammatory markers, and it dampens activity of pathways like NF-kappa-beta. Less chronic inflammation means less ongoing damage to blood vessels, kidneys, and other organs. Number three is metabolic signaling. Caffeine and coffee polyphenols can activate pathways like AMP kinase and influence metabolic regulators. This, in turn, gently nudges cells towards better energy efficiency, improved fat oxidation, and better metabolic flexibility. These are all hallmarks of healthier aging. Number four, is telomeres and cellular aging. Remember, telomeres are these protective caps at the end of chromosomes. And there are some observational studies from large cohorts that have found that higher coffee intake is linked with longer telomere length. This suggests possible link between coffee drinking and slowed cellular aging. But keep in mind, the evidence here is mixed. Other studies have shown neutral or varied effects. The message here is cautious. Coffee may support healthier aging at the cellular level, but you can't say it causes it yet. All right, if you've watched so far, here's the cardiovascular connection that I feel most people miss. Coffee, remember, especially in moderate amounts, has been linked to improved endothelial function. That's how well blood vessels relax and dilate. And there's a lower long-term risk of cardiovascular events. And there's also a U-shaped reduction in cardiovascular mortality. In other words, too little or too much doesn't help, but the best outcomes for cardiovascular mortality are around two to four cups per day. And this is important because heart disease remains the number one cause of death worldwide. Any lifestyle factor that consistently tracks with lower heart risk deserves attention. Let's get into your longevity coffee protocol. Before you celebrate with extra coffee, let's cover the limitations and risks. Number one is observational evidence. Almost all longevity data comes from observational studies. We can't prove coffee causes longer life, only that it's linked to it. Coffee drinkers, of course, may also move more, eat differently, or have other healthy habits that could explain the longer life. Number two is that too much backfires. Beyond four cups per day, the benefits don't keep increasing. And for some people, heavy intake can worsen anxiety, sleep quality, mood, blood pressure control. For most healthy adults, total caffeine should stay below 400 milligrams per day. That's roughly around four standard cups of coffee maximum. And number three is sleep is non-negotiable. Poor sleep is one of the fastest ways to undo any longevity benefit. Caffeine's half-life is roughly four to six hours. For most people, Stopping caffeine about eight hours before bedtime makes sense. That's why morning coffee makes far more sense than afternoon or evening coffee if your goal is longevity. Number four is genetics matter. The CYP1A2 gene determines whether you're a fast or slow caffeine metabolizer. Now, fast metabolizers, they break down caffeine quickly. For them, moderate coffee intake is linked to better cardiovascular outcomes. For slow metabolizers, like me, caffeine lingers longer in your bloodstream. Some studies, they suggest that in these individuals, heavy coffee intake, more than four cups, may be linked to higher risk of high blood pressure heart issues. Keep in mind, if you get jitters after just one cup, develop palpitations, or your sleep gets disrupted easily, your genetics may be saying to stick to lower doses or 
consider decaf. And number five is that add-ins, they matter. A black coffee with a splash of milk is very different from a dessert in a cup. Those add-ins can easily add 200, 400, 600, 800 extra calories. They can spike your blood sugar. They can raise triglycerides. They can completely cancel out the metabolic and cardiovascular benefits. What's your action plan? Once again, two to four cups per day, if tolerated. That's where most studies see the lowest all-cause and cardiovascular mortality. Timing, keep your coffee early in the day, roughly 6 a.m. to 11 a.m., definitely stop by 12 p.m. Stop caffeine 8 to 10 hours before bedtime. Preparation-wise, preparation prefer filtered, unsweetened coffee. Paper filters, they can actually help to reduce diterpenes like cafestol, which can raise your LDL cholesterol. And remember, decaf counts too. Decaf coffee still contains most of the polyphenols and is linked with similar reductions in mortality in cohort study. Let's bring up some practical takeaways. When you zoom out, people who drink moderate amounts of coffee, especially in the morning, and keep it mostly black, they tend to have lower risk of type 2 diabetes, lower risk of heart disease, and a modestly longer life expectancy. And when coffee gets layered on top of the self principle, prioritizing sleep, moving with exercise, nurturing love, connection, kindness, gratitude, and choosing whole food plant-based diets, coffee becomes one of the supporting players in a holistic longevity strategy. What is your biggest concern, biggest question about coffee and living longer? Drop it in the comments below. All right, to summarize everything, can coffee help you live longer? For most people, the best available evidence says yes, when used widely. Two to three cups, mostly black in the morning, are consistently linked with lower risk of heart disease, stroke, and early death. But remember, it is not a substitute for sleep, for movement, for kindness, for a healthy diet. It's just a tool, one part of a bigger picture. If this video helped you to understand the coffee longevity connection, please hit that like button. It helps more people to discover that content and subscribe for weekly evidence-based health tips. I post multiple times in the week. Now, be sure to share this video with someone who loves coffee and wants to find ways to potentially live longer, live better, because it could make a real difference. Lastly, I want to thank you so much for joining me on this journey. And remember, always practice kindness and gratitude to others and to yourself by taking care of your health every day. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see everyone in the next video.